So what's the verdict, verdict, you guys? Can we not go higher? Uh, no, I just like, uh, I don't know, I've been pretty blase. Yeah, okay. All right. If you want, you can. So I drive for a while, or do you want to drive, Don? You want to take it up? Have you driven yeah, much? You go ahead. Do, Here, let me let me give you the yeah, glove. You can take my glove. Okay, take this perfect. one. Yeah. You want me to hang on to this for you? you, you just, just point it. You just say things into okay. it. Okay. <laughs> 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 PG rated things. Yeah. I had some guys say things that they didn't want to repeat, and I didn't catch them last night while videoing. Oh, oh. <laughs> one of them involved making a pocket, and was something along the lines on the Tyvek kites of a foreskin-like. I forget exactly, oh. but I couldn't get it captured anyway, and they wouldn't repeat it. Okay, so now it's captured. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's just You're anecdotal. Saying, it's just saying. on me, and oh. I could have just misheard. You know, like Ronnie said, I, I read somewhere that uh, you know Jeep is going to, you know, uh, send all these things off to Italy or China or whatever. So sometimes, I don't know if you've got the feel, some of the times you just kind of have to walk it, like you, you can feel it and you sort of put in a little bit and it'll, it'll take it up and then you kind of let it out a little bit and it'll go up and it's sort of like that walking it up and elevatoring it up. You like that one better? No, just like, I, like, I don't know, personally I like having two gloves. Sure. Uh, okay, well, because I don't trust my you know, when I was in Chile in April, uh, we went to visit the Quanticum <laughs> Foundation for the treatment of burned children. I was shocked to see that Turns out Matthew didn't talk about Chile, but Chile's a big kite flying celebration in September and their anniversary, you know, anniversary of their independence. But this young man had a huge, he was in for treatment, he had this huge scar, keratoid or whatever they call it, the size of your thumb under his arm, where a kite line had gone under his arm and one cut and two burned the just dickens out of him. So, so I wonder whether, because I have a friend from Chile and I was telling him about all of this and what his response was, uh, like kind of horror because uh, they do a lot of fighting and they actually they they still do the glass they tried to claim razor blades in glass because these guys claim no no there wasn't any glass on the line but that's what you'd say right yeah, <laughs> yeah no yeah. i had no glass yeah. on that line oh jesus like, really yeah well this man had a terrible injury under his arm and uh so see if you can take it on up let's see if we can get some altitude let's see if we can fly this baby up now we may not be able to but if we can it's worth seeing if we can go ahead and get the lift because we're only doing this today, right? So this is our last shot. I won't be back here forever, probably. You'll be back, but... To Coquitry? Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, all right? Coquitry is not on your necessarily the I've list never, of highlights. I've been to Coquitry before. <laughs> Should I start walking yeah, up the yeah, and, and see if we can get some other features, get some of the richness of the terrain that's around us. We have to, what I would have done if we, if I'd been, had my head on, I said, well, we need to do our safety minute. What's the worst thing that can go wrong, right? Well, we could be struck by lightning and killed. We could fall in the lake and drown, but we could walk into power lines. Yeah. We could uh, walk into traffic. We could trip and fall into a hole because we were so preoccupied with flying the kite that we didn't pay attention to what we were doing. Alligators. We could be eaten by an alligator. So all of those things are, things that we should keep track of and then try to mitigate uh, and avoid and when I when I do that I try and just consciously take care because when Stuart and I flew on one really neat thing at the Sonoma Lag Farm I damn near fell into a hole that I didn't see you know backing up and it was like far enough a deep enough hole it would have been really bad you could have definitely hurt yourself I'll say when I when I was flying kids as a kid um, on these bluffs, and so you always had to. Ah, like, yeah, really pay else. attention. And also, it's just a, a hassle about trying to get your kite back unless if you screwed up because it's just going to go down into a bluff down the Right, road. right. Let's see, there, there's a nice bit of tug. So you can exploit that by seeing if you can get more out. And if we were successful, if we get this up very much higher, then we could say, all right, let's do that circuit everybody's been talking about. Let's see if we can figure out a route we can walk around and get as much of the richness of the features on the ground as we can get. But if we can get it high, see, if we can get it high enough, then we don't have to do that much walking. Like, And you're already the highest kite up there by some yeah. margin. You think even that other one? Well, oh, maybe not. That's Jeffrey's. His is, his is pretty high. And I don't know where he is. He's out over more interesting terrain, though. I'll tell you that. I'd say if you get a, if you get a pretty good thing, if you just walk pretty much. Straight, so yeah, I think we could start walk. We could walk along the edge. Of, we could walk wherever it's convenient to. But if we kind of did one 
sort of along the roadway yeah, here. Transect yeah, we can start transecting it. And it turns out that if you're, you know, that discussion about GPS tracking and, and getting the, the orientation of the, the device, if you have a smart, you know, accelerometer, gyro, lat, longitude, roll, pitch, all that stuff, the cloud, the services I've seen that exploit that like to have a nice uniform set of tracks, mm -hmm. good overlap between the images, Okay. and so forth but it, you know on the other hand we'll get what we get yeah but to the extent i mean i don't know how for example we might find if we were to, once we get clear of this we might find we could walk right over here on the edge of the road the yeah and stay on this side or we might find that that isn't fruitful i can scout it for us if it looks like to see if it looks manageable i think the what i would say is it's a fairly narrow strip and we might not want to walk on that side because you can you can size it up here when you look but it seems to me like we we might be able to but we would also be and so far we'd be good because the wind is away from us headed down from downwind from these poles but if the wind were to shift and start moving into these poles we'd want to have an escape plan so that we weren't like faced with an alligator beside us yeah. as we tried to recover yeah, the wind should be just pretty much going to run into a swamp that's your only solution yeah that. so i would suggest we come back over here rather than try and walk along the road okay. I'm at the, pretty much the max point. Okay, so that's that's the full roll of, I think that's a thousand feet of line that ships with it. Now, here's where you may need to walk backwards a little bit to put some pressure on it to see if it'll elevate her back up. Yeah. And you also have to be prepared, like, if it doesn't, where, you know, <laughs> yeah. But it's it looks like that's starting to lift again. But it seems to me, I don't know how Chris is doing with, I don't think he's not launched his dual rig. Because it seems to me like this is a little guarded for a, the two camera and the extra hardware associated with the yeah. aluminum frame like he and I have. Yeah. But I think we can now, let's let's see if we can work our way over here. Because I'm, I'm greedy for coverage at this point. Sure. I'd be willing to risk going along the road if that would if, be If you want to give it a try. I mean, we'll certainly get more coverage. I don't know whether we can then cut back. Whereas if we walk on this side, we know we can cut back and go along side. So this could be a little more preferred. Okay, sure just in terms of the logistics and the amount of time we have. Now, it's interesting to watch that thing sort of drift what to the right. What do you think, uh, what are the chances that the, that the wind direction shifts much? Well, there's shear. If you look at winds, I used to fly light plane. If you look at the winds forecast or the wind actuals on ground and at elevations, they're not the same. Like the wind's doing one thing at the ground and then oh. it's, you know, it's or, its orientation is different. Or if you watch people who fly, you know, hot air balloons. You've got their rig up. Hi, all right, you go, Chris, go. You're looking good. Thank you for the reminder. I heard you say it, but I had yeah, that, that whole building you should probably stay away from. I had neglected to share that as part of our safety minute and planning. I'll catch you later, Matthew. I don't want to distract you. Oh, okay. So yeah, just general rules, but then... But so there's that rule about airspace. What I realize is uh, some people who are flying institutionally, here's what I would say as a just a person, not as an organizer for public laboratory, is I don't know how many people uh, do go through the necessary protocols to get a permit and file a NOTAM to fly when they're that close to an airfield, but you're supposed to. How close? Like within that? five mile radius. Okay. So it turns out in Livermore, a lot of the places I fly would be within five miles. So yeah. I have never filed one, but there's a, like there's a group that's associated. I can't remember, but Matthew would know or others who have routinely gone through this process because they fly in an area and they fly as part of a university program, and it's like they're right up against you know a, an airspace uh, within that distance, and so they want to make sure they're pure legit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, it would not be good to be busted and have an incident and then discover you hadn't done the paperwork and hadn't filed and so forth. And so I need to be more thoughtful about it and go through the process of learning how to do that. Right. But I haven't. I've looked at the forms and it's a kind of a paperwork kind of a form and I think you have to update it and, you know, which is not at all unreasonable. I used to file flight plans, right? I mean, but... Yeah, yeah, you've been doing it. Attention Woohoo! Don does good!
<laughs> Good idea to watch your kite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now walking it back this way, we're. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so beg for forgiveness. Don't ask for permission. Well, and for example, we got. I got. I had this happen. A fellow bid on a day. You know, he bid at a Rotary Club auction on this uh, personal aerial mapping s photo session, and so he. I said, pick the place you want to fly, and we'll meet and do it. So, it took him a long time to get organized, but he finally did. He wanted to fly out at Shadow Cliffs, which is a regional park, part of the East Bay Regional Park System in our area, that's got kind of a big quarry that's now a recreational lake. And so we got up there and we flew. It was actually interesting. I made some mistakes that meant it was a really hard day of flying. But the net is, we did then finally get a lot of good imagery, but when we were bringing it down and landing in the parking lot, a, a park ranger vehicle pulled up and he gets out you know and says where's your permit for this I said I don't need a permit you know we're, we're you know we can fly fifty you know we're under six feet etc he says no no there's a there's a rule in this park you can't fly without a permit it's gonna do it again so we may have to walk into it we'll have to see you're, you're kind of getting as good as spotting that and adjusting to it as I am <laughs> So he just wrote me up. He took my name and, you know, as though if I was caught doing it again, he would have me on record. And I said, well, how can I find out? Because I checked the website. As soon as I realized he had some rule, I was a very apologetic officer. I, if I'd have known, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But he gave me a card, and I thought it was his card. Well, it was just the East Bay Regional Park's general office number, and I've just rattled around in their phone system, you know, three or four times trying to find somebody to say, how do I apply for this permit? Right. And so my point is you have to watch out for those kind of things, which might or might not be an issue and Stuart was surprised and thinks the guy might be wrong because he, he also told me if you do get a permit you can't fly you have to stay below 400 feet well that is the rule for RC aircraft you know no matter what you're supposed to not exceed 400 feet with radio controlled aircraft oh. so we, we might have to pull it in faster or walk backwards or something or you can hold this and I can I can use a glove and oh, yeah. we can yeah, if need be we can yeah, you can, and, it, it's, and you can just place it, loop it on the ground and in front of you. And in the extreme case, now you're getting lift again, but you can, Matthew's got this great hand over hand kind of a routine like this where you can just pull it down in six feet at a time kind of swatch. Now, oh, you didn't nice. need to do that, but, nice. but when you have to get down in a hurry, that's good to know. Yeah. So those are the two things that I'm aware of, our airport proximity rules and then local ordinances or sometimes obscure that would preclude you from flying in our park or our neck of the woods or wherever. I see. Okay. Now other countries, like we should talk with Cindy because I think other countries have got much stricter controls. I think in the UK it's almost like flight plans for, I don't know for sure, but my impression is that it's, it's much stricter. And, yeah, I can imagine, but not always clear where you are. And I'll tell you one thing that I found, is I tried to fly in, um, in Chile when we were on this trip, and first of all, everybody laughed at me because it's the wrong season. They said, you should come back in September, that's when we have winds, you can't fly now. Nobody tries to fly kites now, but so I was trying. And, oh, I see. And uh, so I thought, well, maybe I could fly off the top of this, these tall buildings that have got nice observation decks on top. So I, I went over and had called, but the hotel guy had called and helped in my broken Spanish to convey my request. And he said, yeah, you can go over and just check in at the desk and they'll take you up to this one that's around the corner from us. So when I got there, instead, I made the mistake. I didn't see the people I was supposed to talk to. Instead, I saw these guys at this desk. And well, they're with the building. And of course, there's no way the hotel can give me permission to do this. You'd have to talk to their manager who's downtown and it's Friday afternoon. And no, you know, there's no way. So they said, you know, we're, we're two blocks from the Israeli embassy, and we can tell you that, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is flying over the Israeli embassy, <laughs> because oh, they will oh. be, and he, he made the gesture, da, 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 da. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, like, he knows this, like, this is a big phenomenon that happens all the time with people <laughs> flying over the Israeli is embassy with kites okay. or balloons and being shot down, you know? No, do you want to try? Do you want, do you want to control? I mean, what are we? What are we trying to do? You would just, you would we're getting ready. Actually, we're going to see if we can if we can get enough altitude and then work our way around and get some more coverage, like on the other side of the building. Because I think we've kind of backed ourselves up as far as we can get here without interfering with these guys and without being up against the thing. We might have a little more, but it's, you're welcome to fly if you want. I don't mind flying, but if anybody else wants to fly, I'm happy to. I think I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll watch. You sure? Okay. Yeah.
Well, then you just keep right on flying, pal. Okay, cool. Wow, okay, so you've been all over. Well, I mean, and so what I finally ended up doing, I never did get enough wind, but I finally snuck back into this building in particular and tried to launch repeatedly and couldn't, and I thought, and plus if you do get launched, then can you really recover under this small observation pad on the building, or do you get into this kind of thing right. and it comes down and right. over the Israeli embassy, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so what I ended up doing was just taking my this camera and going around the edge of the building shooting straight down photos and stitch those just for fun and I, I did it at the the Hotel W as well which is a big luxury thing and they said sure you can come up but their observation deck was so sheltered that even with fairly decent winds yeah it was deliberately designed so it didn't interfere with the people who were out sunning by the pool and everything oh, okay and so well, so it seems like in relatively uh, high, what, high, higher winds, uh, you can just stand still. Yeah, you don't yeah. Have to... Or you can get it to go way the hell up and then walk it around with kind of impunity with it really nailed to the sky yeah. if you want to walk a pathway. Or in Stewart's case, where he ran it up to 4,500 feet, he didn't walk at all, but just the coverage that he got from standing there for a few minutes, wow. you know, just managed to get a great swath of stuff. Now, I, it's hard for me to estimate. I don't know whether that's 250 feet I'm not sure. It's not very high. No. So we got nice high res of this car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if it ever picks up enough to get us up to altitude, like, I mean, Jeff's kite over there is doing very nicely. Yeah. You know, if we could get, if it would get us on up and we could get on out and, and make another pass around where we could get some more of the edge, coastland uh, edge of the marsh against the water on the other side, that'd be terrific. But we may not be able to. And so we'll just, this will be our contribution to the flight, right? Yeah, yeah. To the set of images. And then we keep our fingers crossed that the little sucker is still flying and it's not too oblique that it hasn't slipped the rubber band housing because, you know, we just kind of had to adjust that at the last minute. Well, did something jerk that around and it's diving one way or the other? Right. And oh, and so this device is this is just the uh, the power shot or uh, yeah. This is a this is a, a band around it. Or yeah, this is just shooting in continuous mode. It's a Canon A twelve hundred, and it's got a. One of Matthew's tricks is to take a piece of kite string or some heavy string and tie a knot or a couple knots in it, tape, lay it, tape it so that it's kind of right over the shutter, and then use rubber bands to, to press down on that bump on the string to keep the shutter depressed. And that's kind of nice and a little more secure than a found pebble or a, you know, a wad of tape or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but that's the basic idea of it. And. And the constraint with that is when it's shooting at that one, one per second, you, you have to, when, you're, when you first fire the camera up, and, and you can actually have the shutter depressed when you do it, you need to have it focused on the horizon to get the initial exposure and, and focus to, to latch in, because it'll use it for the whole balance of all the shots. It doesn't oh. auto-refocus, whereas when we're doing it like Chris and I were doing with these CHD key thing, CHDK things, it's doing first pulse focus and get exposure, okay. and then second pulse fire. So it's a longer cycle to do that than uh, than so when it shoots. Your first photo is of like you. It's just going to be. A yeah, it, it, or if you inadvertently have it pointed, you know, out of focus at oh, the ground okay. or whatever. That's why the horizon, because you want yeah. That infinite focus. Yeah. Space. So it looks like we might be able to get around here. This is worth seeing, All right? Yeah. yeah. Walk, walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. All right. You're doing great, man. Well, with all of this expert. Interesting to me that part of the Quanticum's uh, annual educational stuff is they do a public safety thing in kite flying season that says, you know, it's, they've got a poster out and it says, you know, one, don't fly near power lines. Two, just use, never use metal wire. Sure. You know, uh, you know, if your kite gets snagged in a power line, don't climb up and try and get it down. And, like a uh, 4th of July where they tell kids not to yeah. blow their fingers off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, in the light winds, you're getting better results out of that dual rig than I was. Than I think we were, we thought it might be too marginal for it, but you know, you're doing just as well as the single kites are doing, the single camera rigs are doing, it seems to me. <laughs> I need some more wind to get up here. Yeah. 
but we're getting some. It feels like it right here. You're trying to see how to score a kite fight? <laughs> how do you think you score a kite fight, man? Well, I think, I don't know, but I have a hunch it's the one that gets, the one that stops flying and plummets to the ground is considered to have not done well. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> All right, now I'm just telling, wait for enough wind to get me around the corner there. Yeah, I think we can come around the corner. We're not like Chris. We've got enough wind to get around the corner of the building here if we want. You taking my wind? No, we're going to stay well away out of your wind. We, we wouldn't want to fiddle with that. Up, up, up. Voila! Up, he says, and up it goes. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the primary thing. Chris is getting her under there. Pretty work, Chris. You did good. Is that cool or what? So we should start planning on wrapping up? All right, Jeff. No, that's great. I think we'll have got a lot of nice stuff to stitch. I mean, if we're still running and... Well, fresh battery. Yeah, it'd be if the knot slipped off the, the shutter trigger, right? So... Well, if we've got five or so minutes, let's see if we can just take a walk around. Do you want to, do you want to just walk building? fast or do you want to... Yeah, because you're doing great. If we just walk on over here, just as and and sooner or later we'll be pulling it down anyway. So all we don't, I'd say the main feature we don't want to do is just drop it in the water. Sure. But other than that, because <laughs> this baby's shooting every second, so if we just keep walking and and uh, get over here some distance, we'll have gotten that much more that we didn't have. Even if we have to keep reeling it in, if you need some hands to, if you need to, so, to trade off gloves, if you want it pulled in, I'm happy to pull in for you. Mm -hmm. I want to really just coming down now. You want to just trade me one one hand so I can take one glove there and you go. all right, got that one. Okay. And just don't get burned in the short run because it can slip okay. in, in a New York minute. You've got a burned hand. All right, I got it. Okay, this one. Okay, and I'll let I'll you do the this. sound stuff. Oh, I love the sound of that thing, that feel where it vibrates. So you notice yeah. that. It's really kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, I got All right, it. So I'm doing the sound. Yeah, I think we're just. We yeah, I think that's what. Okay. I had in mind.